Why do losses occur? Is there light after loss? What do they have to teach us? How should we view them? Then what do you think is the biggest loss for a person? When you lose a person, uh, you know, uh, to death, uh, the, in the form that you knew them, uh, you're never going to experience them again. Do you think that if you are lose, if you are losing something, there we still stand to gain something out? Arey, arey, don't laugh too loudly. Tomorrow you will cry. We have to go through a loss to go through a gain. So, and how have you dealt with losses in your own life? And actually, when you lose and find no, the way you value what you found, your inner self, yeah, the inner guide, it becomes so much stronger that often you get force, foresight into what is going to happen next in your life. Getting into it really helped a lot in overcoming that. But then when my father expired, he just expired few months back. And whenever I think of something, should I do this or that, I somehow ask my mother, whom I've never met. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Life Positive Show. I hope. All of you are taking good care of yourself and thinking positive. The topic for tonight's show is dealing with loss. Losses are never easy to accept, whether it's losing your wallet or a precious relationship. While some losses are easy to bear, others can be very difficult to cope with. It could include losing your reputation, losing your life saving, your limb. Or a parent, child, or spouse. Now the question arises: Why do losses occur? Is there light after loss? What do they have to teach us? How should we view them? And what is their purpose in our life? To answer these and many other questions around loss, we have with us Megha Bajaj. Megha is a Mumbai best, based best-selling author, author mentor, film script writer, speaker, and above all, an ardent seeker. She was awarded as one amongst the 25 most inspiring and influential women of Mumbai by World Women Leadership, and was featured in top 20 most influential authors of 2021 by Daily Wire. She has been writing columns for Life Positive for over a decade now. Welcome, Megha. Welcome to Life Positive Show. I feel very happy to see you on the show tonight. And I am sure that everybody who's been reading your columns in Life Positive must be eagerly waiting to listen to what you have to share with everybody tonight about such an important aspect of your life. We all know it's never easy to bear losses. Yet, they always come up in our life, whether we want them or not. So, uh, Megha, should I ask you my first question? Absolutely, Shivi. Just a pleasure to be here, Shivi. And Life Positive has always been like family. It's always felt like home. So, it feels really good to just be here with you, you know, after so long. And yeah, I'm just happy and excited. Yes, yes, yes. So, Yes, Mika, I'll begin with my first question. So should we categorize losses as bearable or unbearable? And if yes, then what do you think is the biggest loss for a person? Actually, I'm not sure if uh, there is something called as bearable and unbearable. You know, it's very subjective because each of us have a very different threshold of pain. And, you know, for some people, something may be a very big loss, whereas for me, it may not be. And, for someone else, you know, so it's very subjective and I'm not quite sure, you know, how to define a bearable or an unbearable loss. Uh, but definitely there's one thing that I have come to realize about loss is that it, it, um, it's not about whether it's bearable or unbearable. Uh, but I think what really matters is, is it temporary or permanent? Because, you know, a lot of us go through, like, I think life pretty much is like stock market, right? Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. It goes all around and uh, we kind of get used to it, right? Sometimes we're a little low on health, sometimes we're high, sometimes a little low on bank balance, sometimes high. So all that 
you know kind of goes on but the moment it's a permanent loss uh, you know where you know it's irreversible i think that's the one that actually uh, has the most transformative power because the rest of the things are like day and night you know it comes it goes it comes it goes and i think all of us kind of learn to take it in our stride uh, but the permanent losses i think are the ones which uh, really define our lives so to speak so i think more than bearable and unbearable i would say it's temporary or permanent loss that kind of defines our lives in a lot of ways so which losses are permanent losses according to you meka i think uh, the biggest and obviously the most obvious one is death because uh, you know once the fact of the matter is when you lose a person uh, you know uh, to death at the in the form that you knew them uh, you're never going to experience them again right you i mean you can never call them up again you can never sit across and have a cup of tea with them again you're never going to feel their touch again right all of that yes. you can keep replaying it in your mind but it's pretty permanent another loss shivi i think comes close to you know death in a way that i think it can be sometimes very permanent is uh, the loss of reputation i think sometimes uh, you know we i've seen so many people around me and you know you you know of my journey you know a lot of work i do so i i, I like writing about people who you know been very successful or whatever and then when i've seen some people who for whatever reason after climbing that zenith you know mm. kind of fall or they have a loss of reputation i have personally been able to see very few who rise back you know it it's usually if you stop trusting someone uh, it takes a lot to bring that trust back you know and i mm. think we've experienced this whether it be a politician a celebrity even a guru you know once mm. the reputation is lost i don't know if it really comes back to the extent that it was so i would say the two things that i see as very big permanent losses is death which is uh, i think the biggest one and to some extent the trust or the reputation yes i agree i agree yeah. if you lose your reputation it is very very difficult extremely virtually impossible to gain it back as yeah. therefore one has to be very very careful about their conduct in in personal as well as in its professional life yes so anyways we are talking about losses and obviously for everything there is all always a reflection outside uh, always uh, something which is compensating it so do all losses also prepare the ground for future gains if there has to be some kind of a consolation to this aspect of loss do you think that if you have lose if you are losing something there we, we still stand to gain something out if yes how yeah i think shivya have two answers to that question the first is that a lot of us somewhere have bought into this thing that um, you know i don't know if it ever happened to you but my granny used to tell me whenever i would be laughing too loudly she said are are don't laugh too loudly tomorrow you'll cry okay and unknowingly i think that built a pattern in me for a very long time and i remember writing an article on it for you as well that mm. i always thought that we had to go through a loss to go through a gain and you know over time being with my guru being with you know people who are very positive i realized that we can do away with this pattern where we believe that a gain has to be preceded with loss why can't good become better and why can't better become best because mm. i don't know of any law of life it says that oh you have to be at the rock bottom and only then you can climb there are mm. enough people who been at a height and just gone on climbing again so that's mm. one that i don't want to interlink the two any more you know and it's so much a part of our dna i think i can't tell you about the amount of people i mean i you know work with youngsters they all tell me that oh yeah good times bad times you know good will uh, be bad then bad will become good but i've also seen lives where they didn't go through that cycle i've seen mm-hmm. people where they kind of let the losses be pretty shallow and let mm-hmm. the gains be pretty high so so i think i want to stop interlinking the two you know mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. one and second 
if i am in a state of loss right and i love the star uh, jk rowling talk that she gives at the harvard commencement where she says that you know when you hit the rock bottom the only way to go from there is the top so one thing that loss does is it kind of makes you lose all your fear because you you know you lost it all right so now all you can do is go up so i would say that if you are all you know if you are in a state where things are going great for you why would you ever think that oh now a loss will come but if you are in a state where there's loss obviously you want to only think higher and above and you know go upwards and onwards so yeah i mean i think loss has a huge thing to teach but i don't think we should glorify loss or make it as an integral part of our pattern believing we must lose something to gain something to gain something gain something without losing something right yeah. so like are you talking only in, in terms of uh, financial gains or you are also including other aspects of life for example when we do end up losing our youth our beauty inevitably this it will go including every possession that we have amassed in this lifetime nothing we can carry into the next uh, Right. real everything eventually goes to dust yeah. so are we including this also when we say that you know why can't we have just a, an upward spiral of gains instead of life being a combination of loss and gain right i think that's such a beautiful question thank you so much so i think when we even say death you know we think oh you lost everything right i mean whatever your name your form everything that you ever earned everything that you ever did is lost mm-hmm. so, i look at it that is that when the drop of water dissolves in the ocean has it has lost itself mm-hmm. but it's claimed the whole ocean so is it a loss i'm not very sure if i see death itself as a loss so i'm not able to perceive it as oh i'm going mm-hmm. to lose it all or you know and like you said about youth yeah i may not you know look the way i did when i was 16 okay but today the experiences that i have in my life are so much more phenomenal than when i was at mm-hmm. 16 you know that i'm again not sure if i lost or did i gain it's so much about your frame of mind right and right. i agree yes yes yeah. i i i agree with you because this has been my experience in life as well that yeah it's been uh, again uh, uh, all through if you really learn how to build your life Okay. So, and how have you dealt with losses in your own life? I'm sure you you've experienced what it is to lose. Yeah, I have. Something which you've held very closely to your heart. Yes, I have. Uh, I've had immense losses. Uh, Shivi, I've gone through love losses. I've gone through financial losses. I've had. Uh, phases of losing health. I mean, a lot of different things. Remember, uh, pangs of vertigo. I, in that sense, I lost balance, right? For some time, whenever I go out in a noisy place, I would get vertigo. So, so I've experienced um, loss in various ways. But of course, I think I would want to kind of talk about uh, the most recent one. Uh, that's that's been very uh, defining for me because it's a big loss, so to speak, and yet. the way it has transformed my life uh, so 2005 she was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer and uh, in you know she kind of fought it through etc in 2012 she was again diagnosed with stage 4 grade 4 brain cancer and this time the doctors literally told us please take her home uh, we don't see any hope i mean it's it's best that it's just palliative so what you really need to do you know and in that moment we had a, a spiritual intervention so i have a lot of faith in my guru his name is mahatma so i the doctors are going on telling me it's hopeless and there's this soft voice within me shivi that's constantly telling me wait 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 you just talk to mahatma and then we'll talk then we'll think for her so like my sister was crying my father was crying i i wasn't allowed to cry and i kept feeling that i should talk to my guru and then take a call you know and somehow i called him one of those rare times where i you know actually picked up and called him and he was kind enough to answer my call and he just said one sentence like i was like mahatma it's stage 4 grade 4 brain cancer and doctors have me hope he just said one sentence shit he said your mother is a fighter and she's going to fight this okay and 
it's a very big thing to say when no one around is giving you hope and a stage four grade four brain cancer is, is really not something to you know trifle with and i was like okay he said it and for me anything he says is like you know set in stone so i feel that if someone of that evolved soul is saying it then that must be true and with that faith we kind of you know me my sister my father both our husbands so imagine someone who was supposed to go in 2012 june around june is when she you know got diagnosed to june 20th of 2022 10 years she's danced she's had the most amazing life she's traveled she's inspired i don't know how many other cancer conquerors she's outlived all her doctors and yes then finally we lost her you know on june 20th of this year it's bitter sweet shivi because i could say that oh my god what a loss and it's it's your mother you know and and to tell you the attachment that i have for her is uh, so she's lived like we all lived together my mom dad me and arun my husband we lived together from the past 6 7 years because i wanted to be with mom and one of us wanted to be there so it was me and um, if like if i have to go from my study to my hall i cross her room and if i hear her was doing <coughs> i used to skip a heartbeat like that is the kind of attachment that i have for her that i could not take one cough you know it's like no 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 you know not for mom it's like that and then when you lose that person and every time that i cross and i look and it's an empty bed you know there is no one over there anymore of course it's it's you know perceived as a very big loss to the world and i am so surprised she be at myself like honestly i thought i would be a wreck okay like my husband was like oh god i mean he was actually like at least two years i don't think i'll have my wife because you know you're not going to be normal for two years and things like that and every one thought i'm just going to be a wreck because of the attachment but i'm so surprised just look at me i mean four months after this i'm sitting here talking able to only feel the greatest bliss that i had someone for all these years to love who's loved me like more than i've ever understood love you know i mean if that's not worth celebrating what is you know i so often i cry okay and i'm not going to i love my tears and i feel very proud to cry i never feel like oh god you know handkerchief i i i own my tears you'll be surprised shivi every time i cry it's out of the deepest love it's out of cherishing her it's out of gratitude that someone who could have born in 2012 you know when i was so much more younger so much more fragile you know actually mm-hmm. waited for 10 years despite her body so mehta just, just tell me like uh, who or what do you credit this uh, this you know phenomenal transformation in your in your consciousness vis a vis losing somebody as precious as uh, your mother to you uh, it's it's very difficult even the most evolved people they fall apart they they find it very difficult to overcome a situation like this and often they do take almost maybe years to get over and then get on with their lives when as you 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 are you know you seem to be in a very placid place i'm not saying not emotional but at the same time as having had the grip over this phenomena of death or or of human mortality which most of us don't have to to transcend into this space what has it taken you i think there are so many things shivi that's built up but I think one thing is uh, spirituality, because the more and more you embrace spirituality from a very young age, and you know, I urge all our audience, whoever I mean, anyway, life positive will only draw seekers. So I know that everyone's already on the journey, but you know, the true test of spirituality is actually in how you live your everyday life. It's nothing about, you know, I've had some very. Uh, very um intense spiritual experiences okay where i've experienced the whole cosmos i've had energy surges i've had all of that okay and yet if you really ask me is it those that matter or is it just that simple thing of being able to 
deal with the everyday emotions i would say spirituality is actually all about how you deal with your everyday life and you know in fact when you embrace spirituality every day when you suddenly come at that cliff you know, and everything's like you know you're about to fall i think spirituality has this way of holding you and saying hey you embrace me now i'm going to embrace you know and that's what i felt like i felt all along like for 20 years i've been a meditator i took to meditation when i was very very young and you know i'm i'm just i've never, I've never how, how young mega how young were you like in your early 20s or were you in your teens Yeah, my teens is when I embrace. Well, that is something very, very remarkable, and this is a message I would want to go across from this channel, particularly that there is, you know, no particular time from which you must be embracing spirituality. You can start very young because the younger you start, the better you are disposed to brave the challenges of life. You get that kind of, you get that support. that invisible support which is not tangible but at the same time it is very very real and which can hold you through any kind of difficulty so thank you mega for bringing it up that you started very early and therefore the the sooner you start the better it is but i told someone i was like someone really young i was like hey i want you to subscribe for life positive it's an amazing magazine and all like yeah yeah it's awesome you know after i grow a little older and then i understand all this i do I was like, no, 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 no. It's uh-huh. now that you do it, and that you know, it's literally like that right. brick upon brick upon brick. The way it builds, and then when you're faced with that giant of an issue, you suddenly realize, hey, something's holding me way beyond my understanding. You know, I mean, the fact that I'm talking to you without crying right mm-hmm. now, and I'm not holding back. I'm just myself. Right. You know, and and I'm celebrating mom is is only because of. every that ordinary day where i kind of kept choosing you know right over easy kept meditating kept you know uh, embracing spirituality in the best ways that i am i'm reminded of uh, a friend who's also mumbai based who's to the anand tendul uh, i hope you know him uh, anand tendul anand tendul ji has also been a contributor to life positive and he's a uh, But uh, kind of holds a uh, very workshops of corporates. So I had met him at one of the one of our expos, and he had recently lost his wife, and he was uh, distraught. And there, a master, basically, I, well, I shouldn't be saying a master. Basically, my own master. He was incidentally there during the expo. He had come to deliver a talk. And uh, then Anand ji he asked me, do you know him and how is? I said, yeah, I know him very well, and definitely if you meet him, you will you will see how your life has changed. So and the next time when I met Anand in Delhi, he uh, uh, he was standing on a dais, facing a very big audience, and he was part of the uh, now he part being part of the same organization of my guru. And from that day, he was telling everybody that after his wife passed away, he, he felt totally shattered. But after meeting Matri Dadashri ji, uh, he doesn't feel alone anymore because he says that once I was sitting in my room and I was remembering my wife, and I told Dada in my heart, Dada, I'm missing my wife. What should I do? And he said, I don't know what happened. Some miracle happened, and there was. I felt I began to feel centered from within, and the sense of loss, of pain, was just obliterated from my mind. I didn't. I was not lonely anymore. And we've literally seen her like get out of hospital beds, go to HDB, dance her way back. You know, so it's created that thing for her. And now, since two years, she was a little bedridden, so she mm. couldn't go. So he was so gracious, Shivi, that he said to us that he told Nidhi and me that. You know she can't come uh, to mm-hmm. HDB, so I'm going to come Lovely. to her house to meet right. her, and I'm going to do HDB for her while I'm there. You know, and that was such a gracious moment. I mean, a guru, and he also told us this. She was like, "I am going to come, but once I come, after that she will go, because the only thing that she's holding on to or waiting for is to meet the guru." You know, so. He came home and I happened to be the person uh, to pick him up from the car, and I had such a beautiful moment. And I realized with the guru, nothing is a coincidence. You know, nothing. You you think it's a chance or you think it's something, but it's not. 
so i was just like you know uh, in an embrace with him and i just put my head on his near his heart you know and he just told i told him i was like matter even when i'm alone i feel exactly the same feeling that i'm feeling with my head against your heart and he just looked into my eyes and he had this twinkly eyes and said when are you ever alone and that moment was so defining for me and then it happened then he came and met mom but what was so defining was that all along she be like you asked that what helps you so spirituality and to me spirituality is synonymous to my guru and that's what helps me and exactly what you said about mr tendulkar is what i feel that whenever i'm alone and if i'm about to you know give in to an emotion which is like oh you know a sadness or some pettiness only the sentence comes to my mind when are you ever alone and you know yeah it's sad it's tough to be sad anymore actually because when am i ever alone yeah that's uh, really really very very eye opening for anybody that anybody who's grappling with any kind of loss so not only is it about uh, you know these big losses or permanent losses like in losing uh, a loved one but also in terms of small losses also you you will be held you will be supported and you you will be taken through through that problem which has been my experience and Uh, Meka, like when we had decided, no, that instead of this being an interview, let's have a tete a tete on Zoom, and let us discuss our own experience and why law. So I'll tell you, I even though I'm not very materialistic, so sometimes I can also become possessive about even small things. And when I become possessive, I do become possessive. I remember that I I had purchased a few sets of earrings, some ear tops. and i was uh, keeping them in in a safe place so that i don't miss uh, or don't lose any of the sets and one day what happened is somehow i ended up losing one one part of one set one one year set one year set or one one set i was very upset very very upset and then that day i i went to my uh, guru's uh, picture which i keep in in my home and i said i don't know i want it and you have to return it to me i just want it i have lost many things in the course of my life and but i don't think i have been very adamant about getting anything back and especially relationships if they, i've lost i've let them go i felt that okay they've run their course and the time has come but i don't know i became very very adamant i said no i want you to give it back to me and i think for one or two days i kept on harassing him that no you have to get it back and the next day i opened my bag and it was lying there right on top of it the same bag which i had been ransacking for the past couple of days and not being able to find it it was lying just over there so the divine listens to you to everything every heartbeat every emotion every pain every challenge every uh, uh, situation you are going through and often times it responds also when you feel when he feels that no you have become like a very stubborn child uh, uh, literally pressurizing your father to get something he will get it for you obviously yeah. this does not uh, include obviously uh, bringing back from dead your loved ones obviously because they are very hard some very hard lessons also have to be learned by we are over here and being okay in separation or seeing the larger picture is definitely one of them but yes even smaller losses also either you will get the ability to bear them see the bigger picture or if it is very important for you you may even get it back absolutely absolutely i've had a lot of cases of lost and found them and and actually when you lose and find no the way you value what you found is especially a relationship i mean i have you know had the privilege so to speak of losing a few and then getting them back in even greater vigor and huh. that feels amazing because suddenly you value what you've lost a hundred times over right like you just feel like wow this is how it felt when i didn't have you now that i have you i know how i feel and i'm not going to let go of you so i think loss has a lot of yeah obviously it's uh, different strokes for different folks in different situations also Right. So if it is important for you to get back the relationship it will happen and maybe you know if it was only for a particular phase and you had to come out of it even that would happen 
so i i think your intuition or your it builds up a lot you know what you want and you know what where the chapter has closed where things have ended for good so that is also when very important aspect of uh, being immersed in spirituality your inner self you are the inner guide it becomes so much stronger that often you get forced foresight into what is going to happen next in your life right you you agree me ka totally i mean uh, so i have a very close friend of mine here and he knows i keep telling him i'm like uh, i just know this is going to happen and he's like really and he's like very uh, different okay so he always give me that look like yeah yeah you know right right but i mean because when you are in line and when you are aligned with the whole stream of consciousness there's nothing that you don't know right we are all actually in the same soup we are all in the same energy so you know you are sitting there in delhi i'm here in bombay but we connected at levels way beyond the geography right so you often know what people are thinking what they are feeling and yeah fine so uh, yes i'll ask you the next question uh most of us are very unprepared to deal with the loss of a loved one and the gash can often last a lifetime in our hearts i i've seen it women who lost their children they never you know overcome that pain and there have been other people also they go on saying that if she were alive or if he was there i would not be in a situation like this sometimes there are people who blame themselves for losing an important person in their life even yeah. to death where they have no control over what do you have to say to people like that so about losing one, parents ha huh. yeah i think one very classic syndrome that we all go through you know to answer your second question first is that is guilt so mm-hmm. no matter because when you love someone so much how much ever like i have after my marriage served my mom for 10 years physically like not even in the she was with the next room and you know in the indian context once a girl's married of course i could have gone and met her on the weekends but i've lived with her so every moment from the time i was born till she left i've lived with her you know so my thing is i should feel like wow i mean i've done my best and i've done i mean i don't think there's anything i would say that i've not done or Nidhi is not done for her. My dad's not done, or whatever. And yet, when she went, that first thought was like, "Did I do this? Oh no! That day she wanted to eat that. I could have given her that." You no, know? I mean, you go through those feelings of like unnecessary guilt, and I think that's one thing that I uh, found myself relieved with uh, with Mahatreya largely when he said this in one of the satsangs. He just said that. you know this was not for me it was for someone else who was coping with uh, the loss of their dad through covid you know and that son kept saying but i could have said okay mm. but i didn't and i couldn't so mm. what he says is that can we please stop playing god you know uh, we are not we are humans and we none of us can determine the time that someone else goes you know it's between them and their god so somehow that eased me so much that there's nothing i could have done more you know and that relieved me of the stress that oh god but 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 you know that big but so at least that's one thing that i told myself i wouldn't go through and i didn't go through it at all mm-hmm. and another thing that you said is that how do you deal with this and especially for most people i mean you know my sister was telling me that somebody called her and told her that I lost my dad 20 years ago and till today I have like fibromyalgia and I have issues around it because I'm not able to deal with it you know so your there's this very beautiful metaphor that you know many years ago I heard as very little uh, in a satsang where mahapre just said this he's like you know the way you have to look at death is that like right now you and me are in two different geographies right you're in delhi i'm in bombay but we can the and right now we happen to connect through zoom but always we are not in touch right but the fact is you exist in that geography i exist in this so the way he explained is that if you can just see the deceased as they are there but in a different geography 
and the only thing is that okay you can't call them you can't touch them but it's just two geographies somehow the ease that it gives your mind is so tremendous because i think the most uh, shattering part of death you know you know loss is that it looks so permanent it feels like oh here was a person and now they're not there right mm-hmm. but if you can keep them alive in your mind and if you can keep feeling that they exist you know like it's the loss of a person but the gain of a presence and mm-hmm. it's a loss of you know that form but the relationship is still there so like i i notice myself talking about mom in is and not was mm-hmm. because to me she is you know and she's so real that i don't feel and this is not like a you know it's not a psycho way of dealing or it's not like i'm hallucinating i am very well rooted in reality that she is no more physically okay at the same time in my mental reality i can relive a hundred beautiful memories i can cherish so many things that i don't feel uh, that that permanence or that shattering feel you know so i would just want to urge everyone and i know it's not okay i mean and had anyone else been talking you probably feel it's blasphemous right because you feel like oh it's an ivory tower anyone can write i'm telling you i've lost her less than 4 months ago okay and she is the most important one of the most really important relations of my life the only thing that's keeping me so centered and so equilibrium you know in equilibrium is that she's right now she's loving me i can feel her I can relive her. I can cherish her. I, I really feel her grace all around me, and I think, I think this is such. It's it's a much more empowered way of looking at the whole thing versus anything else because it just helps you deal with things a lot better, you know. Mm-hmm. And everything about life is ultimately a choice, right, Shaili? It's like you can see it like this and go on suffering, being struck, you know, struck. you can traumatize yourself to no end to no end like i know i can listen to her favorite song and put myself into it like mummy where are you where are you or i can listen to that song where she and me used to always dance on my birthday and just mm-hmm. feel so celebrative about it so i think the choice is always ours that are you going this path or that and one check that helps in this state is that the person you lost how would they want to see you? you know so every minute i'm aware that how would my mom want me to be she she always wanted me to be the happiest person in the world so she's not going to be happy seeing me unhappy so let me get out you know i think that's this the way is, what I, you're sharing here mehta is so beautiful it's it's beyond beautiful why because i have seen families where people have turned against god simply because somebody they love uh died passed away in this despite their ardent prayers to god to save their lives and they disconnected this severe disconnection with the divine on this basis um not realizing that you know the divine is the only one who could have filled this wound and given them some perspective as to why things happened the way it happened so then they have nursed a grouse against the divine deciding not to never look in this direction and kind of have been bitter about this that of life and i feel that no matter what even if things some certain things they don't go as you have planned even if you have uh, suffered the greatest wounds never let go of this connection because this is the only connection which will see you through and it will get you get you the perspective which you badly need because eventually whatever is happening that has to have some bigger reason behind why why mothers have lost their babies it has happened and it is very very difficult for a mother i have seen people who have never been able to overcome this loss i i've known an uncle of mine who could never in this law lost his daughter with thalassemia and he continues to tell me that losing a child is the one of the biggest uh, pains anybody can encounter and he was like in that state for as long as he was alive after that and they never turned to spirituality so you know it the same event can take you further down or it can pave the way for your uh, growth and ascension as well 
so no matter how difficult the situation is no matter how painful and it is not only about you know losing somebody to death you can lose your life savings also you can lose this a job which is like very dear to you okay you can have a huge heartbreak you place your trust in somebody and you felt that they would be there for you for all your life and suddenly they are like gone they betrayed you it's like a, a, a dagger has been twisted into your heart but does it mean that uh, you know we should you know abandon the connection the only connection which will never leave us that is the our connection with the divine because that, that is the biggest mistake which people make and i think that megha what you're saying is very beautiful that it is god it is spirituality which has seen you through all your life challenges and even the a permanent loss like this where after 4 months of losing your mother whom you have been looking after with such care and devotion for all these years uh, you are you know, with a smile on your face you're facing a big audience and you are sharing your experience with everybody so much is there to learn from you by everybody who is listening to this show i okay. don't know what to say but shivi one thing i do want to add is that you know people often say that if someone's ailing or you know when you're expecting it it's easier to deal with it versus uh, but i want to say that loss is loss and at any age at any stage i know of someone who's lost their mother when they were 10 i know of someone who's lost their mother at 50 at 60 you know someone who whose mother was actually 90 when they went mm. it's as it's as painful Yeah. So you know, and one more thing that you said that losing your child is so tough because you know you we all somewhere know that at some point we lose our grandparents or we lose our parents, but you never see a child. You always think your child is going to outlive you, right? And you know, like you shared about the gentleman, I know of a couple in Bangalore who lost their autistic child at a very young age, and right? I about nine. Now. Of course, that must have been very heart-shattering. But the way they took to it is that they created and built a home for many more autistic mm-hmm. children, you know, children who who were orphaned. So, so there's always a solution. I don't think forsaking God is ever the right or the good option for anything, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's such a beautiful sharing. Okay, so I'll ask you another question. That often. Uh, losses are also accidental in nature there are many people who lose their limb or you know, an important organ in their body and they have to live with it all through, through the rest of their lives so do you think that you know this this kind of a loss is karmic in nature and i'll just share another recent story which was uh, why even i felt very pain to read it there was a young girl in patna 20 year old and she had gone to get so get a small ear operation done and what happened was that the nurse over there she injected a wrong injection in her veins the result of it her arm developed gangrene and she had to be the arm had to be amputated her marriage was fixed but that was called off and when i saw the visuals even i felt very very pain because she was sobbing inconsolably inside the hospital room with that bandaged arm which was no longer there and for nothing just a small ear operation gone wrong and people when they go through such experiences they obviously their heart gets filled with anger and revolt as to what was my fault why did it my if everything has uh, gone for a sixer my life has shattered before my eyes i've lost my arm i've lost my identity so many of us are victims of acid attacks it's some of the most traumatic experience to be uh, had by anybody and for no fault of theirs So Megha, when we are confronted with a loss like this, what do you think? What what is the reason, and how should we look at such losses? You know, one thing. I how should we deal with such losses? Yeah, I think Shivi, what I've really felt in my own life is that the questions that you ask yourself when you're faced with anything, beautiful or ugly, actually defines what happens next. Mm-hmm. So, to me. whenever i have faced challenges and some really big ones i mean i was very very young when mom had stage 4 grade for brain cancer very very i mean a lot of things right so i could have said that hey, this is the time she i want her and 
why you know i have to be the caretaker why is it that the whole thing is so lopsided and so many things, right moms just want help whenever i've had some issues or a relationship the thing is that asking this question why did it happen to me actually is like a dead end because there are very how will you ever know how will we ever explain to this child in patna why this has happened to me i mean who can who can her husband to be explained can the doctor explain why this happened can her parents can god's not going to come down and explain so i think asking that it's a natural part of the healing okay so i understand you you know you go through a little bit of why me that denial but i think the quicker you can come out of that and mm-hmm. say now what you know this has happened and now what i think it's going to lead your life to a much better place than going on asking why me why me so yeah i mean you know it's very relieving uh, to kind of put the whole thing on karma and say that must be you know some way she, the nurse would she would have done something to the nurse and that's mm-hmm. why it's all come back and it you know at least it relieves us but there's never going to be a written you know thing coming to you saying this is what happened and then that happened we're never going to know it so i prefer working and operating my life out of what i know rather than banging my head against what i do so mm-hmm. is it karma is it my magnet went wrong i didn't follow secret i don't know i don't know but it happened now the only thing i can do is after that initial grieving or denial move and say okay now what can i get something else can i do can i move on what more you know and also i think gratitude here in any circumstance that looks very overwhelming i've personally felt that gratitude has played a very very key thing in me that you know i always feel that even if something looks lost it's never that everything is lost you know it's just it's like she she lost her arm but the fact is she's still alive whereas there are people who lost their life so i think whenever i've seen a circumstance as okay what can i be grateful for it's always helped me to kind of bounce back so uh, yes mina and now i would like to open this uh, session to uh, the listeners we have currently so i am allowing participants to please unmute themselves and if they have any questions they can ask them. yeah uh, hi this is shweta uh, i first of all really thanks for this uh, session it was really helpful you know everything uh, to just study uh, quickly i would say you know i lost my mom again with cancer she again was fighter and uh, obviously we was we have started coming up with the terms and then i lost my father so then it became very overwhelming and as you said meditation after we lost mom obviously meditation helped a lot but still we are not i was not able to do it continuously there are a lot of other practices also i started getting into and it really helped a lot in overcoming that but then when my father expired he just expired few months back it has been very overwhelming you know internally i know all these things you know meditation everything it helps but somehow not able to concentrate on that you know whatever you said because of you know some gurus meditation and all everything i know everything i write gratitude i every morning i write gratitude so I, i and i've been practicing writing that gratitude for past i mean two years since my mom passed away uh, but then i thought i was writing uh, you know everything for my father's health and he was He was completely fine. The thing was, one fine morning, you know, a sudden heart attack. He was completely fine. That is what you know, it's very unacceptable. But then, of course, uh, as you said, when you need to see a bigger picture, I start thanking, uh, like, okay, I have still two sisters to look at. His parents are not. But at times, it gets very, very overwhelming. Very overwhelming. I usually don't cry, but. Uh, At, and then obviously I work, so I started getting you know spending time with my work and all everything. Apparently, it seems everything is normal, but deep inside I feel very you know vacuum and the acceptance that none of my parents are there, nobody is going to ask. It 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 gets very overwhelming at times. 
so what, how you know how to be consistent with all these things you know it gets very difficult actually in the day to day life it's so strange that i didn't cry all this time and right now my eyes are a little moist just and i shivi i think this is the reason we did this no just so that yes. Shweta, there's no easy answer to this because how it 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 would look very cruel, no? Life that okay, mom went, we're coming to terms with it, and now you know the the other such an important person in your life going away in a short span. I think I I think it's perfectly okay to take your time to deal with these losses because it's. it is it is a loss and in fact i love the sentence that says that only you know a, a lot of people ask why does love hurt in fact if there's hurt that means there's love so the fact that the loss of both your parents means so much means that is how much they loved you and you loved them right so so i think i don't think there's going to be an easy answer to this so i don't think There's anything I can tell you that do an Om Mudra or do something or you know do something that's going to ease it off. All I want to say is that I think one thing that helped me a lot, Shweta, is that I've stayed true to all my emotions. So like, if I have felt anger, I've allowed to allowed myself to feel a complete anger, you know, and then I watched it leave me. When I felt sad, I've allowed it to. totally you know so i think what helps is if you can accept that you are right now i am really really overwhelmed i am going through this feeling that everything seems unfair and is there really a god i mean okay you took away one and then you went again and took away the second i think accepting that you are feeling what you're feeling is actually the biggest and the first step towards the healing because when you deny it or if you tell yourself so i've never told myself unnecessarily oh i'm happy or i'm fine if i'm not fine i'm not fine but i'm also surprised that i've been fine you know so understand that it's not like i'm trying to uh manipulate my emotions it's i'm just true to what i am this moment i think the more and more you let yourself feel what you're feeling and tell yourself it's perfectly natural and it's only healing me it's only going to make me better and stronger uh, i do think shweta that you'll reach a point where there will be tears there will be an overwhelm but slowly it will start moving towards cherishing them a lot more and that pain or that grief or that denial will start becoming less and you just said it's only a few months so please i mean give yourself time and i think you're already on the journey that you're saying that you're already feeling grateful that you have two sisters and you're back to work so give it some time i i i feel that you will be pretty good you know in a few more months and the loss is still the loss but the way you see it you'll be able to smile a lot more you'll be smiling through tears you'll just feel a lot more celebrative about the relationship versus this you know overwhelm So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, one thing which connected, you know, if I start looking at from the example that you gave for two jobs you face, I think probably that one thing I can start trying that way is seeing things that way. That they are in different geography, just that physically I cannot see them, but at least they are together and happy. They are right. And, yeah. And, and, <laughs> yeah. And the best part is, you know, uh, that obviously mom and papa both. wanted us to be the happiest person in the world so we have to be happy for them but yeah it's gonna take some time and that's fine and that's fine and there's this very beautiful uh, philosophy uh, you know that i read which said that when someone deceased you know uh, they are actually around you for a few months and they watch over you so literally every time that you are in a lot of pain it causes them a lot of pain so not that you know you you have to be true to you but i think after you're done with that bout of crying uh, something will tell you hey papa's here mama's here and you will begin to move that's all and yeah i think you're doing beautiful shweta thank you so much i think i'll be better 
Yeah. Thanks. Any more questions anybody would like to ask? Anybody yeah. from the audience? Yeah, Jamuna. Jamuna. Yeah, I, yeah, I just uh, yeah, I, I am I wanted to ask you Megha about uh, meditation. Uh, now that is something do you have a proper routine kind of like at this particular time as a kuch is that the way you do it or you do it uh, as and when? Uh, so when I began Jamuna many years ago I was very about the routine like the first thing I woke up uh, I used to sit in meditation and I should just express a lot of gratitude to Mata, Pita, Guru, Devam, everything like I had a set pattern uh, Correct. then. Uh, well, there's this beautiful saying that the highest technique is no technique. Okay. So when the more and more I started meditating, uh, honestly, Jamuna, uh, lives become pretty meditative. So like right now as I'm talking to you, I'm completely in the moment and totally here and now. And to me, that is meditation. Like to be able to be in the moment and take it for what it is as meditation. So nowadays, it it's just flowing like sometimes i'm writing an article and that's the deepest meditation sometimes i'm just watching the sea and that's the deepest meditation so no longer is there a you know particular hour but what i can tell you is there's not a single day in the last two decades of my life where i've not had enough feeling of connection or of just feeling very meditative and to me that is what's kind of kept me going yeah and yeah i do also want to give you an uh, uh, i did like that geography thing which you said a different geography again i will share my own experience in this context i also lost my mother very very early okay so so early that i don't remember her at all actually in that sense i think it's a good thing because i don't miss her you understand no because I, everybody talks about her and say power my dog but i i was looked after well and all of that that's a different journey but somehow i got this uh, you know habit that whenever i uh, think of something should i do this or that i somehow ask my mother whom i've never met but somehow i feel uh, from the my conscience that she's looking up to me and i don't know the superstition or what but see i want to also tell you But I've had very good women with me here in my life, always. <laughs> so that I actually feel is a blessing of my mother. So yes. yeah, but the geographic come is a very good comment. I understood that uh, yeah, they are with us always. Yeah. And in fact, you know, I want to add a little thing for Shweta here because you know, just that Shweta, if you build a routine where, like, say, maybe before going to work, you know, you just Uh, say thank you to your parents or you talk to them or you tell them okay this is what my day was like that really helps because like in my mind i'm telling you i talk to her i talk about her as is i don't know how to say was because to me she is how do i say was you know so i think keeping that mental relationship on and not uh, letting it go into that one frame with that garland but making sure you relate to that person in your mind i think helps tremendously and that's helping me a lot as well uh so, we have a very, very wonderful comment by mr prakash shah he writes thanks for all your dedication i got everything thanks so this is a very very big statement to make uh, mr prakash and if you are making it that it means that the entire effort of holding this show what has gone through has been fruitful has served its purpose really thank you so much for acknowledging uh, and anybody else would like to share something or uh, i have a question uh mega sometime uh, just before this question you said that you are in a meditative state almost all the time and uh, you are in present moment so my question is there are many people i am also one of them who are uh, on the journey and we try to be present moment to moment but it is not possible many times for hours we just get lost in our engagements what have you experienced that and if you have experienced that what what would you do to come back to be present and flow with that yeah. 
that's beautiful rishi so so like i told shivi that i think i got a little lucky because i got into this very early like so it gave me many more years to practice so i had days where i don't think i've had a moment where i was in the present okay and today i can't say that there are too many moments where i'm not in the present and there's just been one simple exercise which is very simple and i wrote about this to shivi so it's she is kind of like my conscience because every time i have an insight i go and write to life positive and it really helps me one thing i've done rishi is i've understood that there's something called as the god center okay and i perceive this god center in my heart okay i used to earlier see it in my navel now i see it in my heart and somehow i feel that that's my god center okay so suppose i go through some ruffle uh some emotion good or bad okay so it's not about we always yeah. think oh something beautiful also sometimes takes you away from the moment you know yes so, yeah so whenever i go through the tussle and hustle of life i yeah. i just remind myself at one point hey 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 what's your anchor your god center go back go back and i just recenter myself to that god center i know people who do it through their breath they just come back to their breath you know yeah, uh, but yeah. for me i used to always like i've been a very quirky seeker so i would ask my guru that i mean it's boring to go on focusing on the breath yaar i mean i want to focus on better things in life what breath 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 you keep saying so i've been very quirky in my journey of spirituality and and what did work for me is this god center and what i do is rishi when i meditate I deep in this God center, so I focus a lot of the energy in the heart region, and I okay. think, oh, this is the center that is rooting. So it's okay. become over twenty years of meditation now. It's become such a deep uh, anchor that no matter where that ship goes, ultimately it comes and it you know sits over. There. So okay. that's the way. That's the technique I've used to kind of get there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We we have uh, another uh, statement by uh, Suman. Uh, she writes, uh, "Thank you, Bika and Shivi. This uh, talk has helped me as well by reconfirming some ideas which felt as true, but I have no confirmation of because you have felt it too. Thank you, Suman, for acknowledging, uh, and thank you, Bika, for being so open." your talk and sharing everything from the heart because it is helping so many people uh, who have been in difficult situations and have not been able to find any confirmation of their inner state which they had been feeling that it was true but they didn't have any endorsement but uh, whatever you've shared has truly and deeply helped people in knowing themselves better the fact that i feel so beautiful right now i think it makes me feel good that we all come together we all talking we all listening to each other sharing the pain sharing yeah i don't know it it just feels good. yes uh, there's another message from mr mooli uh, he writes honestly i was not sure how this program will help me before joining the meeting however after hearing megha and shivi i feel i'm lucky to be part of this i'm grateful to all of you for this opportunity another uh, somebody uh, whose name is not there and who is entered by this name iphone yes there is nobody who talks about grief and no one wants to and mr mooli says i lost my son of 27 years tragically 3 years ago and i'm still struggling mooli ji we all are with you uh, in this difficult time yours as megha rightly said this there are no ready made answers to this problem but what i do know is that if we have faith and if we hold on to that faith and we then there does come a time that you know things fall into place and you do get answers especially to questions like these so why this happened yeah i know that sometimes it is said that it is few times to answer this question like this but at, at the same time also do know of people who have got access to this why and answers which have satisfied them at a very deep level they understood what their connection or what the life lessons they was they were supposed to undergo which would not have happened had such a tragedy not happened in their lives you know that what spirituality is about 
that we are all incomplete human beings and we have come to learn our lessons and sometimes if those lessons have been put on hold have been deferred for a long time something of this uh, magnitude might happen in your life just to kind of you know shake us up and send us into that deep state of question because eventually the heart opens sometimes when everything is going well in our lives the mind is very happy the heart is very happy and there is nothing to question nothing to search nothing no way to arrive whereas this is not the truth of life so when we get a jolt like this you know the heart center eventually which was like kind of pretty much closed it is forced open it makes us vulnerable if nothing else it will make you empathize with you empathize people who are undergoing similar situations you know how to hold them you will know what they want to hear what you need to say most of us don't know what to say when we meet somebody who has lost somebody pata hi nahi hota kya kahe mujhe to abhi bhi nahi pata hai lekin jinko jinke sath ye dukh guzra hai unko pata hota hai ki kis sthiti mein jo hai usko kya kaha jaye ki usko aaram mile usko sukoon mile the worst thing to say to somebody who is undergoing a, a suffering like this is to you know mere sath yehi hua tha mujhe pata i know what you will do no never say this this is the time not to bring yourself into the picture talk about him his relationship with his son what he was what he meant to him these are the things you know which make us more human you mean which 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 uh which unite us with others the, those those gaps they they narrow down human beings come together and apart from this yes these answers the other questions that you have in your mind why it happened yes if you just stay put there will come a time when this answer will also be provided and it will yes give you a deep uh, inner i say the satisfaction you will not feel any more complaints with life I could just add one thing for you, Murli Ji, is that uh, you know there's so many stories or so many metaphors that I heard about death, uh, and I think each one prepared me to go through what I have. And uh, so one thing I just want to share is that you know Mahathir always says that it's like a train journey, you know, and when you get into that train journey and when you leave, is actually not really up to you. You know, you kind of. uh it just happens and he's like when a person's journey is over the soul journey they have to get off so you sitting in that train with your son can keep wondering why did he have to get off i you're still there why did you have to get off but the truth is that his journey was over and he had to get down you know this gave me a lot of peace because it made me feel that you know we're looking at things in a way small a uh, time frame you know and a very small space bandwidth the more we expand it and we realize that there's something much greater than us that is timing everything uh, it it just gave me peace it just made me realize that yeah the time for her to get off on the platform had come now extending her by a few more months or years is of no value because for her her soul has completed that journey in this form I think we are uh, exceeding the time which we had. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, we are kept for this talk. Uh, but still, uh, the, the conversation is so engaging and so useful. So, thank you, Megha. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming and being so brave to to be able to open your heart and sharing and sharing from such a deep place uh, today for the benefit of everybody who's listening to this trip. Ah. Uh, I definitely would like to invite you for more sessions for more such talks and obviously to not only pertaining to loss but also to gains which was the primary idea because eventually looked at from a larger perspective we lose nothing we gain if nothing else we we learn a lesson it is there is goes an adage you don't lose anything in life either you will win or you will learn an important lesson and i just want to dedicate this hour and Few more minutes to mom because all along she she has been a person who always said that you know how can I reach out how can I make a difference what can I do and you know now that she's not in form every time that I'm actually making a difference you know in this context in other context of the work I do 
I just feel she's telling me from within, hey, that's for me, Vika. That's for me, and I feel her closer than ever. So honestly, I think one of the most selfish things I've done is come here because in the last one hour, I felt closer to her than ever before. So this one's for you, Mom. Hey, that is really uh, yes. Sir. We all of us let us dedicate this. Uh, this whole talk to Megha's mother. Uh, I don't know her name, but yes, we we are really grateful to you for I feel even being over here and guiding Megha and sharing from the deepest space of her heart and 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 uh, uh, holding so many people, giving them solace, giving them hope, wiping their tears. Thank you, Megha. Thank you so much once again. Thank you so. Much. So with this, I close the show. Thank you for being on the show. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you, all the listeners. Thank you.